My aim today is to review the current services on offer to older people, to look at the challenges facing the sector and to provide some thoughts on how together we can get over, under or around the potential obstacles to providing simply the best housing, care and support for older people into the future. As Cameron has already mentioned, I'm the Director of Care Services with Fold Housing Association and I'm just going to take a few moments, just as, as Chris did, to tell you a little bit about what we do. And I know quite a number of my colleagues also provide a large number of these services as well. But Fold Housing Association has a proven track record in leading the way in the provision of services for older people. Fold was the first to bring a sheltered model of care to Northern Ireland, to introduce the housing with care model for frail and older people and people with dementia. In addition to these services, we have the full telecare services, which were mentioned earlier by Pamela, providing a 24-hour telephone response service. We have our vital signs monitoring service provided through our telehealth services, the first of its kind in the UK. We also have our brain bus with the use of the It's Never Too Late technology, and this aims to provide cognitive stimulation to people with dementia, reaching out to people in more rural areas. And we have our staying put service to assist and support people through the grant applications process for home adaptations. And as Brian made reference to in the little leaflet, our most recent service, our hub and spoke floating support service, bringing the role of the scheme coordinator into the community to help prevent social isolation and connect people with the community. With such a broad and all encompassing range of services, we've asked ourselves the question, how are we perceived? in all our various areas. If we look at sheltered housing, we are the largest and best known provider of sheltered housing. With low void levels, the schemes are well positioned in town centres, close to local amenities and public transport. They are safe, secure and modern. The tenants are champions of older people's rights and they have a place on our board. But what more do we need to do to be the social landlord of choice? We need to build healthy waiting lists. We need to develop services that build on the existing security and personal safety. We need to ensure that there's proper understanding by the general public that the apartments offer independent living. But as needs increase, there is the ability to provide person-centered support and care to help sustain and maintain these tenancies. In the Housing with Care arena, we have over 30 years plus experience in providing support and care to older vulnerable people. We have a reputation of providing an excellent standard of care and are seen as an innovator in the dementia social care model with a robust governance structure with high levels of transparency, accountability and openness. Our model of care promotes independence and again champions the rights of older people and once again a service user sits on our board. So what do we need to be? We need to be the market leaders in dementia care, a provider who cares passionately about their residents and seeks to maximise independence and quality of life, to be seen as vibrant, ambitious, forward-thinking organisation, responsive to the latest thinking and have the ability to adjust in a changing business environment to enable us to position our models for future growth. So what is the future solution? What can we do as housing providers? We need to look at a continuum of care aligned with customer need. The first choice in this continuum is to support people to maintain a tenancy in their own home or sheltered accommodation, and when required, be able to easily access low-level support services such as floating support, staying put, telecare, a wraparound, joined-up service with best assistive technology, support and personal care based on the needs of the individual person. And then as care needs change or increase, older people may choose to have their home adapted to meet their increasing needs or choose to move to supported housing or housing with care. So how can we work towards achieving this ideal older person service model? Again, a lot of the areas that Chris has covered are the same for us in older people's services. It must be needs led with thorough joint planning processes it must have the involvement of all key stakeholders, providers, and RQIA from the outset. There must be commitment in the form of revenue funding and policy intent for the medium and long term. There must be risk sharing to tie in during the scheme filling phase. There must be allowance for flexibility in design, which allows for changes in client need, demographics, or future policy changes. Greater role and recognition for the use of assistive technology 
wrap around community service as an integral part of the solution, such as daycare, respite, and other support for carers. In recent times, I have been encouraged by the collaboration between housing and health to help address the issues that have seen a reluctance by housing association to develop supported living for older people. Whilst most boards are committed, uh, they are reluctant given the risk that has been seen and we see in the past and into the future. Housing associate, sorry, too much capital money has been invested in these fantastic buildings to allow silos to undo all this good work. We need an alignment of policies and meaningful consultation with providers and the end user. And again, Chris has made reference to this, but Fold has found itself in the position where it has had to challenge policy decisions on the removal of the special needs management allowance. This matter highlights how a short-term change in policy can completely undermine a business model. We also have the unfortunate under-occupancy at our issue at Langara, supported living scheme in Enniskillen. These assets are at the very least a 40-year investment. Their development cannot and should not be taken lightly. Without a thorough due diligence of all issues, medium-term policy and assessment for the demand for services, flexibility for possible change to other needs groups. To date, Fold has incurred £1 million um, loss on the scheme in Enniskillen, and that has been totally, as Chris made reference to, totally uh, down to us. We did receive some funding in the early days, in the very first year, but up until now, we have had £1 million of a, of a loss there. Firm commitments from health partners and RQIA must be included and be aligned with the true and current needs of the clients. On a positive, telehealth is a working example of how housing and health have worked together to provide a service that helps people retain their tenancies, avoid unnecessary hospital admission, expedite earlier discharge, and assist the client in self-management of their condition. For Fold, it has helped to enhance the governance of Fold overall, including Fold Telecare, and has seen the provision of a disaster recovery centre in Ballymena. We need a joined up housing, health, care and support system. This will ensure that we provide a high quality of care and support and that appropriate accommodation is provided to our older people. Specialist housing and housing related support services help people to live independently in the community, reducing the need for care and preventing poor health. For example, timely home adaptations and reablement services achieve early discharge, prevent readmission and help people to recover their independence. Housing is an essential part of an effective health and social care system. Integrated care, housing and support enables alternative care pathways to be provided that reduce the demand on acute service and improve the quality of life for individuals. And I think reflecting on, on something Brian said, and I think it is very easy for us to sort of look at sort of the challenges and, and the obstacles, but when you actually see uh, Hemsworth Court and what that does for that person, when you listen to Sean's story, when you listen to Brian and, and his experience, when we get out there and we see those services, we know that that's what's needed and we have to find a way of getting over all the obstacles that are in our way. So developing a wide range of housing options is central to the successful implementation of transforming your care. Housing associations deliver already a wide range of services and promote independence and prevent people needing more intensive institutional forms of care. Supportive designs including new homes built to lifetime standards, supported sheltered and specialist housing, advice and information on housing op on options. To achieve what seems to me easily achievable outcomes, I would ask the question, should housing have representation somewhere within the Transform Your Care structure or with the integrated care partnerships. If we were involved, would this ensure that the future needs of older people and people with dementia would be better met and more easily sustained? Overall, we need to move away from the old lines of this is a housing service, this is a care service, this is a support service, and can only be provided by this department or that department or this person or that person. Our customers have no interest in who funds what or the technical policy reasons for not offering innovative, flexible, modern services. It is up to us, the providers, to make it easy for them to access. For me, I believe this is to be the very least they deserve. <laughs>